Hey guys, welcome back to the OT Minute. My name is Arno, I'm a third year occupational therapy student. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Asia Impairment Scale. Asia stands for American Spinal Injury Association and the Asia Impairment Scale is part of the International Standards for Neurological Classification of Spinal Cord Injury Exam, which is a neurological exam that is completed for patients with spinal cord injuries in order to assess their motor and sensory functions. Now this scale is super important because it helps to essentially classify classify a spinal cord injury and gives us a sense of how severe the spinal cord injury is. A lot of times we'll hear the words thrown out whether as to whether a spinal cord injury is a complete versus an incomplete spinal cord injury. And so this scale specifically gives us that verbiage. Now spinal cord injuries are generally referred to by the level at which they happen. So whether or not that is a cervical or a C7 versus a thoracic spinal cord injury, such as a T12. That being said, it's usually the most caudal level at which there is a three out of five or greater muscle strength and sensation is intact. Therefore, testing kind of starts at higher dermatomes to figure out where's the last level of sensation. And then motor function of key muscle groups is tested by manual muscle testing in order to assess what key muscle groups have at least a three out of five strength or more. Based off of that information, then a neurological level of injury is given. Now let's run through these levels really quickly. There are five levels, A, B, C, D, and E. A being the worst injury, which is a complete injury and then E being normal neurological function. Now an AIS or Asia Impairment Scale score or level of A indicates that it's a complete spinal cord injury, meaning that there is no sensation or motor function in sacral segments S4 to S5. Now S4 and S5 innervates the sensation of the anal area as well as the sphincter muscle. Therefore, if there's no sensation or motor response at that level, that would indicate a complete spinal cord injury. Now as we move to an AIS score, of B, this would be an incomplete spinal cord injury. And by incomplete, what we're meaning is that there is some sensation at the sacral level. However, there is no motor function of the sphincter at the S4 to S5 level. Now, as we move to level C, this would be somebody who does not have as severe a spinal cord injury as somebody at the level B or A. This would still be considered an incomplete spinal cord injury, but now not only is sensation intact at the S4 four to five level. Now there is some motor function. However, this will still be pretty limited because less than half of the key muscle groups that are tested will have a muscle grade of three or higher. Next, as we move to the AIS score of D, which again is an incomplete spinal cord injury, we are now moving to the point where similar to level C, sensation is intact, but now half or more of the muscle groups that are tested have a score of at least three out of five when manual muscle testing is completed. Finally, we get to an Asia score of E. This would mean normal sensation and normal motor function. Just wanted to sum it all up in a little visual um, so that you can review it real quick if you're studying for an exam or something like that. I tried to simplify this to be a little bit more visually intuitive. And so it's very simplified. So I always recommend if you want to really dig into the details of the scale, definitely look at the original. I'll post a link below. On the left here, you have the level of injury. So a Asia score of A would indicate a complete injury, B, a sensory incomplete injury, C, a motor incomplete injury, D, also referred to as motor incomplete injury, and then E, as in normal neurological functioning. Now, I would recommend memorizing both A, B, C, D, and E, as well as complete, sensory incomplete, motor incomplete, uh, and so forth, because sometimes a person or test question may refer to either one of those terminologies in order to identify the severity of an injury. So knowing both terminologies is helpful. Next we have our sensory and motor little tables here. So for an A, you have no sensory, no motor. Nice and easy. For a B or sensory incomplete, you have sensory, but you don't have motor. And again, this is measured at that sacral four and five level. Next we have C, which again is motor incomplete. Sensory is going to be intact at the S4 and five levels. But now less than half of the key muscle groups are going to have a three out of five manual muscle testing or more. And for D, pretty much same, except now at least half or more of the key muscle groups that are tested is going to have a three out of five. Now there's 10 muscle groups that are tested. So for this one, if it's four or less of those muscle groups that have a three out of five or more, then it's going to be a C. However, if it's 
five or more of those key muscle groups that are tested have a three out of five, then that's going to be an AAS score of D. And then finally, you have E, which is normal. So sensory is intact, motor is intact. And that's really hopefully a quick visual way to capture this scale. Thank you so much again for watching the OT Minute. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please drop a like or a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.